Suspense. Tonight, bring you Mr. Howard De Silva in You Take Ballistics, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment as bring you Howard De Silva as Homicide Lieutenant Ed Harvey in You Take Ballistics. Cornell Woolrich's remarkable study of the police mind at work, which is tonight's tale of Suspense. By this time, it was night, pretty late. I walked down toward the apartment on the opposite side of the street like I had a dozen times before that day. This time, I had to count the doorways... I knew Cass was on the tenth one down from the corner. I knew he was there, but I knew I'd never see him. It was too dark, and Cass was a lot too smart. Hi, Lieutenant. He made any moves yet? Not a move. How about the back way? No. Peters is covering that. He'd leave us know. Anyway, you know he's still up there. Every little while, you can see his shadow against the shade. There, see? Huh. Hey, look, uh... You got a match? Uh, oh, sure, here. Hey, Lieutenant, did you get any orders, or do we just stick around? Myself, I think he's settling down for the night. No. Mm-mm. This isn't getting us any place. I'm going to make the pinch. Now, come on up with me, see what we got. Sure. Oh, boy, that's good to stretch. My gams were killing me. <laughs> yeah, I know. i done plenty of stakeouts myself. Uh... Anyway, it was warm tonight. That's a help. Yeah, that's always a help. Hey, you know what I think, Lieutenant? What? I think that guy's waiting for something. Or someone. Like who? Us. He's wise, huh? Smart, pretty smart. I don't like it. Mm. Yes, sir, gents. Coleman, Clarence Coleman, take us up. Yes, sir. I need a shave. Huh? Nah, you don't look bad. How long has he been living here? You, how long has Coleman been living here? Huh? Oh, Mr. Coleman? Mm, two or three years. Uh, second door we to your... the way. What a dump, huh? Yeah. Hey, uh... No, no, no. Lieutenant, no, no. think I... No. no gun. He won't give us any trouble. He's too smart. Your name, Coleman? Yeah. We're from headquarters. Okay. You want to come in or you just want to talk to me where you are? We want to talk to you downtown, but first we want to come in. Come on in. Nobody's stopping you. Look around, Cat. Yeah. Suppose you guys got a search warrant. I suppose you got a witness that we don't. <laughs> Go ahead and look. I just want you to know I'm not dumb, that's all. Sure, I know. You're smart. I was doing a crossword puzzle. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> I'll go right ahead. I want to get that one down before I forgot. Cat, you find it? Uh, no. Do you want a gun? Why, sure. Where is it? Tell them to look in the bottom drawer of the bureau, and they're under my winter underwear. You hear that, Cass? Yeah. I got a license for it, too. <laughs> you, you fired it lately? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, I got it. Here she is, Lieutenant. I got you don't rub off any prints. I told you we were smart. Maybe too smart. 38, one shell gun. When did you fire it last? Right last night. Why should I lie to you? You're going to give me the nitrate test as soon as you get me downtown anyway. Right last night, huh? Right into Edmund Lombard's body? Wrong. Into the floor. Here. You got all the answers, haven't you? I only know what I know. Can't do better than that for my own brother. If you, uh, fired it into the floor, where's the crease? See that little scatter rug? Uh huh? Just kick it aside. Ah. See it? Hmm. 
I can do better than a crease. If you dig in with your pen knife, you can probably get the slug. Uh huh. Well, let's have a look. Hey, 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 what are you doing that for, Cass? This guy's just making a chump out of you. Maybe, but we better have the slug just the same, Lieutenant. All right. You, take your hands out of your pockets and get your favorite hat and stop moving toward the door. You're coming with us. Ah, there we are. Okay by me. You get it? Yeah, it's a 38, all right. Am I under arrest? Well, if you got to have a name for it, no, not yet. You're just a guest of the department for the rest of the night. You get the works, I suppose. Cass, take him down the stairs, will you? I want to talk to this kid on the elevator for a minute. All right. Hey, hey, wait a second. You got huh? any more of that gum? Go, yeah, here. Sure, Lieutenant. There you are. Come on, you. All right. Oh, my. Come on. Let's go down here. Yes, sir. You got a match? Oh, sir. I have. A gun go off anywhere in this building last night? Sir. His did. Who's Coleman? Yeah. The people downstairs telephoned me, so I had to go up there. He fired into the floor by mistake. <laughs> he was plenty scared. <laughs> hey, uh, he in trouble? Nothing serious. Just a little thing called murder. For Suspense are bringing you Howard De Silva in You Take Ballistics. Presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. And now bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Howard De Silva as Homicide Lieutenant Ed Harvey in You Take Ballistics, a tale well calculated to keep you in Suspense. I've been on the force for quite a while, and I've I made my shares of arrests big and small. Little punks and chiselers and big-time racket men and crazy, wild-eyed killers. I never made a pinch that looked better and that I liked less than this Coleman. We had everything. We, we had to make the pinch. And I knew it was going to turn sour the minute I walked into that apartment. And a sour murder rap is something, well, I personally don't care for. We didn't take him downtown. We took him over to a little precinct house up on the west side. And we didn't book him. We just tossed him in the back room and let him wait. Leffinger, my boss, got there about ten minutes later. Did you bring him in? Yes, sir. He's in the back. Here's his gun. He claims it went off into the floor last night by mistake. Oh, beat us to the paraffin test, huh? Well, he could have framed it that way after he killed Lombard. Yeah, he could have. Here's a slug, Captain. Hmm. 38. Yeah. Turn the stuff over to ballistics. Yes, sir. Hey, Cass. Huh? Give me a light, will you? Sure. Okay. <sighs> yeah. Any report on the one they dug out of Lombard? Probably on its way now. Who are these two guys? Uh, the night elevator man that took them up to Lombard's apartment and the night counter man at the lunchroom about a half a block away. They recognize him? Positive. Well, let's go to work. Sergeant. Yes, sir. We want to spring these witnesses on them. One buzz sent in the elevator man. Two buzzes the other guy. Okay, Captain. You think you'll sweat? You? No. Hi, Coleman. Sit over there. Sure. Put the light on him, O'Farrell. Yes, sir. All right, Coleman. Suppose you tell us what you did last night. Beginning when? Beginning when you left your apartment. Well, I went out about 9 o'clock. Walked over to 23rd and 7th. There's a cigar store there. I made a phone call. Who to? Edmund Lombard. Oh, so you did contact Lombard? Sure. Did I say different? Go ahead. You know Lombard's racket? You tell us. Collected bets on the nags. Only the long shots he wouldn't turn in. They never came in anyway. So who knows the difference? Only this one time, I get a tip on one that comes in. A 20 to 1. Lombard can't cover. He lambs. I just catch up with him last night. On the phone, I tell him I want my dough. I tell him to meet me in an hour. 
Did he meet you? I didn't give him a chance. I went up to his place. You went up to his place? Sure. No percentage for me to lie. I know you got me placed up there. So you went up to his place? Yeah. He was already packing. Getting ready to lamb again. He kind of laughed and said, you can't blame a guy for trying. I said, I want my two grand. Okay, he said. You win. He asked me for a receipt so I can't come at him again. Fair enough. So I write one out for him on the hotel stationery. We'll wind it up. Let's see how good you can make it. That's all. So he begins unpacking. He figures he might just as well stay where he is now. Then I leave. Hmm. So that's how it was. Sure you didn't leave out anything? No. Why'd you leave out about killing him? Because it belongs out because I didn't. You, uh, you didn't have a gun on you when you went up there. Oh, yeah. Sure I did. Why'd you take a gun if you didn't plan to shoot him? So he wouldn't pull one on me. You think a guy like Eddie Lombard's gonna cough up two grand just like that? Ah, oh, don't lie to him. us. When we bring you in here, we want the truth. You shot him first and collected your dough afterwards. No, no. And then you wrote out your receipt to a no. dead man. No. That's how it happened, isn't it? No. Answer me, no. isn't it? No. No. Cass. Yeah, Captain. Never mind those witnesses. He spiked them for us. Come on in here and give us a hand. Sure. Okay, bring him out of it. All right, come on. Come on, come on, will you? Get up there. Why don't we give you something to pass out about? Now, why'd you tell him? You listening? Why'd you tell the night man that Lombard was staying and not to bother about his luggage? Because I was afraid he'd go up there and Lombard might think it was me again and take a shot at him. Because he was dead in there and you wanted to get clear of the building before he was found. If I did, I didn't go very far. I stayed in the coffee shop down the block for 15 or 20 minutes after. Look, what'd you do with the money you took off him after you killed him? The dough he gave me. I put it in the bank the first thing this morning. Mm, take over, Cash. All right. Come on, Harvey. No, no. Wait till I wash my hands. You know, I need a shave. All right. Come on. Come on. See you later, Cass. Yeah, yeah. Look down. All right, Coleman. Come on now. Why don't you be a... You know, if I'd hang around there much longer, I'd be liable to hurt him. You see what I mean? Yeah. How come nobody heard this shot? People next door were out, and down below they were asleep. Hmm. You know, I don't like it. You notice how he beats us to the punch every time. We got mit- witnesses for everything except the killer. Which all adds up that we got nothing but circumstantial. Wouldn't stand up in court five minutes. Mm. Well, maybe ballistics will tie it up for us. Yeah, maybe. What's the matter? Don't you believe in ballistics? <laughs> sure, but you heard the guy. He's got every other angle covered. Not going to slip up on anything as obvious as ballistics. Don't you think he's guilty? I think he's guilty. <laughs> I went back up to Coleman's apartment. I hate this part of any job. There's always the off chance that it may turn up something, so it has to be done. But but nine times out of ten, it doesn't get you a thing. Didn't this time either. It's a lot of junk. In the living room, items. Crossword puzzle they've been working on, a pencil stub. The butt of the cigarette he'd been smoking and the package it came out of. The bathroom, items. Usual assorted stuff in the medicine cabinet and... Fifteen rusty razor blades under the bathtub. Kitchen items, three empty beer bottles and some very lively cockroaches of sorted sizes. A bedroom, items, a bureau full of linen and three suits in the closet. One of them was the gray number he'd been wearing the night he called on Lombard. There was nothing in the pockets but a Canadian dime, a faded snapshot of a faded blonde and a book of cigarette paper. I put the stuff from his pockets in a regulation brown envelope for no very good reason. Went back to the precinct. Leffinger was still there, biting his nails. Did you get anything? If I did, I don't know it. How's he doing? How's he doing? How are we doing? Lousy. Yeah, so far. You're still sure of him, huh? I was never sure of a pinch in my life. Mm. Listen, I'm going to let it go through on circumstantial. Ballistics will be sure to match his gun to the slug that killed Lombard, and that's enough to do it without anything else. I don't know. Say, what are you drunk? Yeah? Yeah, this is Leffinger. 
Well, it's about time. Well, you knew where to reach me. I told you I was going to bring him out here. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. Ballistics. Coleman's gun was a thirty-eight. I know that. Oh, you know that. Well, then maybe you know that the slug they took out of Lombard is a thirty-two. So now what do you know? That does it. Yeah, that does it all right. No, I don't mean that. I mean he's our meat. He's the guy. You can't tell me different. I'm not telling you different, but ballistics is. And ballistics don't lie. You setting yourself up above ballistics? You take ballistics, I'll take human nature. That don't lie either. If you mean he did it with a thirty-two and then ditched it, you're wrong because we checked all that. I know it. I know he didn't. Otherwise, he, he wouldn't have shot that slug into the floor. But the slug in the floor was a thirty-eight. Listen, Cap. I've called on aldermen, yeah, and, and state representatives. and But even they get a little scared when you say headquarters. But not this guy. He was waiting for us. He was calm. He was doing crossword puzzles. He was too calm. Now, he's too smart. He's got everything covered. He's been ahead of us all the way. He's our guy, I tell you. He's our guy. He's our guy. He's our guy. Well, go on out and prove it, then. All right, don't take it out on me, Cap. I feel as bad about it as you do. Yeah, well, you're the guy with all the big ideas. Go out and do something about it. All right, how long will you give me? Tomorrow morning. You can't hold them forever without booking them, you know. Tomorrow morning? What am I going to do at this time? Look, make it known, huh? Give me a chance, anyhow. All right, noon. And I'm stretching it for you. Yeah, thanks, Cap. Listen, wait a minute. You're not holding out on me, are you? I wish I was. I don't know a thing more than you do, Cap. I just know it's got to be our way, that's all. Yeah, it's got to be. Hey, I, I think I'll take another look at him before I go. Oh, now, listen, Coleman. We know you did it. Why don't you make it easy for yourself? Make it easy for you coppers, you mean? I know you guys. Anything for a pinch. What do you care if you got the wrong guy? All right. Okay, okay, Cass. You can lay off. You got something? Yeah, the slug that killed Lombard was a 32. His gun is a 38. Huh? <laughs> uh-uh. All right, throw him in a cell. We'll probably have to turn him loose in the morning. Morning? What's the matter with tonight? What's the matter? Don't you like it here? All right. But you'll have a sweet case of false arrest on your hands by morning. Remember that, copper, when you're back pounding a beat. Oh, I won't forget. You're smart. Got a match? Go on, have a cigarette. I got my own. Go ahead, have one. I wouldn't take a smoke from a copper if it was the last one before I die. You may have a chance to prove that someday. Yeah? Yeah, when you go to the electric chair. Well, that sounded good, but I wasn't too sure. You know, they say every criminal makes at least one mistake. Well, I wasn't too sure of that either. All I was sure of was that he'd done it, so there had to be some way to prove it. But first, I went back to his apartment. I went over the joint with a fine-tooth comb. Nothing. Then I thought of that suit in the closet. I got it out, I went over it inch by inch. Turned the pockets inside out. And right there was where I found something that gave me an idea, or... Or rather, it was what I didn't find that I should have. I went out to Coleman's kitchen. I made a pot of black coffee, and I sat down to think. And the more I thought, the better I liked it. It might not mean a thing. It might not even be possible, but it was all I had, so... So the next stop was headquarters and the pistol range in the basement. By the time I got through, it was daylight. At a quarter to seven, I was waiting outside that cigar store at 23rd and 7th, where Coleman had made his phone call to Lombard. It was run by a little guy named Truhoff. We questioned him before, but this was different. The story wasn't open yet, but finally, after what seemed at least an hour and a half, I, I saw him. I saw Truhoff come puffing down the street. Well, well, Lieutenant, you're the real early bird, huh? You're late. Late, he says. <laughs> what time you want a cigar store should open the middle of the night? Come on, huh? come on, let's go inside. I want to ask you a couple of things. Ah, uh, more questions. Didn't you ask me already everything but my grandmother's middle name? Yeah, I forgot that. That's why I came back. <laughs> all right, all right. So, now what? About this Coleman. When he was in here, look. Uh, sure, sure. He telephoned from the booth back there. How can I hear what he says from way up here? I don't care about that now. He used to buy a smoke from you, though, you said. Yeah, that's right. Every day, almost. Any particular brand? Sure. Always the same for two years. Uh, these, these, uh, here. 
Always machine-made cigarette. Oh, this? Why not? What did he buy from you the night he was in here phoning? Heard the same. Why not? You're sure he... He didn't buy these? Wait. Yes. If I didn't see them in your hand, I would never remember. Cigarette papers. For change, he said. To cut down expenses, he said. It was the first time he ever bought them. Did he buy any loose tobacco to go with them? Uh, let me see. Why? I think he didn't uh, ask me, so I figured he's got some already. Okay. Okay. You can give me some now. Oh, sure thing. Hey, give me some matches, will you? Sure, sure. Help yourself. <laughs> Say, what is it all of a sudden with you, Lieutenant? You look like you just swallowed the cat that ate the canary. You're all right, Pop. And I'm going to fix you up. Yeah? Yep. To be a witness of a nice big murder trial. Free. I went back to the precinct, but Leffinger had moved them to another one over on the east side on account of the 24-hour detention law. That took more time to locate him, but that was one thing I had plenty of. Now, I was either in with what I had or I was out. And suddenly I felt tired. I felt tired as an old dog. I tried breakfast, but that didn't help much, so I went on over to the east side. Leffinger was right on deck, cranky as ever, but I could see he was worried. We had this guy pretty nearly 48 hours, and the cops don't like to break the law any more than the next guy. Well, where you been all night, Bright Eyes? You look like you slept on a park bench. I didn't sleep any place. I've been using my brains. Why did you leave word you were going to move him? What's the difference? His next move is out. His next move is a Raymond after what I'm going to show you. Great. Great. I'm just in the mood for lantern slides. Let's have him in, huh? Yeah, bring him in, Johnson. Okay, Captain. Now, look, first I want you to watch how he rolls a cigarette. What are we doing now, playing parlor games? Just, just, just watch him, that's all. And remember, I found these cigarette papers in the pocket of a suit. A suit he wore the night he went to see Lombard. Oh, I suppose he gassed him to death with cheap tobacco. Eh? There he is, Captain. Oh, the Rover boy. You guys woke me up just to move me to another hideout. Why don't you get wise to yourselves? You know you're going to have to book me or turn me loose sooner or later. All right, all right, forget it. We're turning you loose. All we want you to do is to sign a waiver that nothing happened to you in here. Nuts, I sign nothing. Hey, take it easy, will you? We got the guy that did it. Yeah? Yeah. Got nothing to worry about. We just don't want any suits for false arrest, that's all. Yeah, well, you took the words right out of my mouth, copper, because my first stop after here is a lawyer. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's, let's talk this over. Smoke? Nah, not one of them things. Will you smoke these, don't you? Yeah, sure. Here's some tobacco. Go ahead, roll one. Thanks. That's not the way. I'm a little out of practice. A little out of practice, he says. Don't look to me like he'd ever roll one before in his life. Is it to you, Cap? All right, so send me to the chair for that. Just the same, he bought these cigarette papers the night he went to see Lombard at the cigar store where he phoned where he bought all his smokes. First time in two years he ever bought any. I know tobacco to go with him. And not a shred of loose tobacco in any of his pockets. Now, now <laughs> why do you suppose he bought those cigarette papers that night, huh? You're telling it. I'm listening. Are you listening, Coleman? You're talking in your sleep. I'll tell you why he bought him. Better than that, I'll show you why. Let me have your gun a minute, will you, Cap? Yeah, sure. That's uh, 38, right? Yeah. Same caliber as Coleman's gun? Right. All right. Now, here's a 32 caliber bullet. The same caliber as the slug that killed Lombard. Do you want to see it? I know a 32 when I see it. All right. Now, we take the 38 bullets out of your gun... Now we take this 32 bullet and about uh, about three of these cigarette papers. We double them over. We wrap them around the bullet. See? See how snug a 32 fits in your 38 gun now? Well, I'll be a monk. Now watch. Now watch how a 38 gun will fire a 32 bullet. I'll put it in the baseboard over there. That's ballistics, Cap. How do you like it? Ballistics. Ballistics. You take ballistics. I'll take human nature every time. Three months later, Coleman went to the chair. Whether he took a cigarette from a copper or not before he died, I don't know. And I don't care.
Suspense. This is Truman Bradley, bringing back to our microphone the star of tonight's suspense play, Howard De Silva. My compliments, Howard, on a grand performance. Say, tell me, how did you like being on the side of law and order for a change? On the screen, I've seen you as a pretty tough character. Truman, I much prefer to be law-abiding. Makes me more popular with my friends. Thank you and good night. Tonight's suspense play was written by Robert Richards from the story by Cornell Woolrich. Next Thursday, same time, Suspense. Produced and directed by William Spear. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.